It's 2021 now. Things are still not great, but damn it, we're hopeful. Or we're trying to be. This definitely isn't a sweetness and light look at the new year, but we're trying to take a positive spin. Good thing we've declared 2021 the year of self-care. We need it. and thank God for the end of 2020 and that's enough said about that. Oh God. I mean, we, you know, we don't need to tell you that 2020 was a clusterfuck. (laughs) Although we hope that everyone listening right now, the best thing about 2020, of course, was last night when we had our four hour long coast to coast live stream that I hope all of you we're watching. Yeah, because it's not like we can host parties this year, so that's what we did. Yep. And, you know, we're probably going to have some more throughout the year because we might as well, and now we know what we're doing, so we can do that more often. And I've noticed if you ask people to participate, they get excited, yes. and they're more inclined to watch all of so it. So 2021. <laughs> we got something real special coming up on Bitchin' Boutique for 2021 with a new year of... Yeah, you're going to hear a little later in the episode. Um, You know, remember 2019 was the year of the vagina. Last year was the year of woo. And 2021 is the year of self-care. And that will all kind of be explained later. <laughs> It'll all make sense. It's fine. It's- and it will not be too woo. No, it's... it's- <laughs> It's not woo at all because I'm doing it and I'm not that woo. So uh, it's very practical. It's just we all we all need to take better care of ourselves. We know that. I don't need to preach at you people, but I will anyway. But enough about that. So 2021 is uh, is a blank slate right now. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, if you th- think back to like a year ago at the beginning of 2020, you know, it's so funny. Every time I look at like Facebook memories or whatever, and as you come to the end of the year, like remember how bad 2016 was because so many fabulous people died Mm -hmm. and it was all like, Oh my God, you know, 2016 is the worst possible year ever. All of that shit. And then Trump got elected and all that crap. You know, of course, we started. 2016 was our first Oh, yes, it year. was. Yeah, We started in May of that year. So, you know, we kind of chronicled the end of shitty-ass 2016. You know, every year something happens that makes it, oh, this year is a dumpster fire. Oh, this year is a clusterfuck. 2020, though. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to tempt fate. By suggesting that nothing could be worse. But God, I certainly have not had a year like that. Even though it wasn't that bad for me, but it was fucking bad. If Trump gets his way, 2021 could be worse. But he's not going to get his way. So, you know. Oh, well, I guess we're still in that little limbo period. Oh, God. Yeah, there's no way. I'm just saying. But yeah, the thing about 2020 is like I had just moved here And I was so hopeful, and I had all these plans. Yeah. And they all went to shit because of the pandemic. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Because you were still kind of getting settled in. Yeah. Because you you got there, what, beginning of December? Yeah. 2019, right? Yeah. I think it was December. I think it was the 6th. Yeah. I think I left on the 3rd and arrived here on the 6th. Yeah. Oh, man. God, it feels like forever ago, doesn't it? I know, but it it was so hopeful and everything, and then it all... But then I realized recently, as I was pondering 2020 and all that it means, 
I think I used the pandemic as an excuse to sort of drag my heels and not do things. I did not do a good job of rising up to the challenge of the pandemic like I could have. I, yeah, I could, I could see that. You did have a lot of plans and they, and a lot of them were things you could have done. Yes. Even within the pandemic, because it was a lot of things that you were going to do on your own. Uh, Yeah. And you could have done them. You know, but I had all these plans. I was going to teach at the bookstore and I was going to do rituals at the LGBT center. In fact, I even had that set up. Right. And then it all just didn't happen. And then I realized, you know, and then I was like, oh, well, I can do it online. And I let my fear of myself on camera get in the way of doing any of that. It's so strange to me. Why, why do you think you have a fear of being on camera? Because in general, you don't have a fear of being on camera. I think what it is, the pagan community can be so judgy. And I'm oh. afraid of putting myself out there. I guess it's because it's a different audience. It's yeah. like If it's silliness and fun, I guess it's just the environment of it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And I think part of it, too, is that, like I was reacting to, you know, things that had happened within the pagan community in the years oh. previous. And that well. I don't think I ever really recovered from all of that. And we've talked about it in past episodes and yeah. nobody needs to know other than stuff happened. And it I, it took me a long yeah. time to get over it. But I was just realizing that, yeah, I just need to get the fuck over it. And, you know, but I think the bad thing about 2020 is that because of all that happened, I spent the year spinning my wheels trying to live as if I was still in Texas. And I've realized mm. that everybody in Texas, their lives have moved on. They don't really care that I'm not there. And because I have nothing going on other than Target. Right. I'm constantly calling and constantly wanting to video chat and constantly doing this, that and the other with everybody from Texas. And quite frankly, I know that people are sick of it and they just don't have time for it. And, you know, I know it's like out of sight, out of mind. And those are people that you would see at least once a month, if not every week. Yeah. Those were people yeah. that you saw all the time. There, There is something about, yeah, I mean, out of sight, out of mind is a good way of putting it, where if they don't have to make much of an effort to see you or to hang out or to be in contact with you, then they'll do it. You, you do figure out what people's level of effort is is when you test it a little bit oh which i've learned people's level of effort is absolutely zilch i mean we could even compare it to there was a period a long 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 time ago um when you decided that you were gonna stop stocking your fridge with beer like way 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 back because you started realizing that there were people who would come over and drink all your beer oh yeah and you just decided for a while that if someone wanted to come over, they needed to bring a six pack and you were not supplying beer for anyone. And Mm -hmm. a lot of people just stopped showing up. Oh yeah. And that kind of stuff is good to do because nobody needs a hundred friends. You don't need that. You need like five good ones. (laughs) Oh, which I have, (laughs) you know, but I realized, you know, everybody's lives back there are going on as usual. Yes, you know, they have their families, they have their kids, they have their jobs, they have their hobbies there. Everything is, uh, you know, it's not their fault that I moved here in the middle of a shit storm and I haven't had time to make friends and get my shit together. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, so the dearest thing to a New Year's resolution that I have this year, which I'm not even considering that because I've made this decision more than a month ago, is I'm just finally putting my life in Texas to rest. Yeah. And sort of looking at it and smiling at it and realize that it's over. Right. Do I need to contact people that I only saw once a year at Kerrville because they made me feel nostalgic? No. Right. Sure. You know, and if I have to do shit online, that's what I'm going to do. So, in fact, I have my very first online ritual coming up a week from yesterday. So I'm excited about that because I'm just fucking doing it. That's so awesome. That's so exciting. You know, and and what are people going to do? Shoot me if they don't like it? I mean, who the fuck cares? And, you know, you can always turn off comments. Exactly. The (laughs) the, the, The worst thing that could happen is somebody, you know, posts ugly comments on YouTube or whatever. But 
fuck them. I mean, my God, all we've ever really wanted from this podcast is ugly comments, and we've never gotten any. <laughs> That's Except true. Except that one guy. Remember that one review we got? I think it was on Podbean. I mean, like, who the who the fuck cares about reviews on Podbean anyway? But we got a review over there. This this guy, his comment was, "Oh, it's just another podcast where the hosts don't know what they're talking about." And it wasn't like on any specific oh, that's episode right. or anything. Yeah. It was just a general comment. And it was like, our show is about us and our own lives. So what insight does he have that we don't have on us? <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I don't was, know what I'm talking about when I talk about me. <laughs> it's probably a Trumpy that we pissed off is the only thing I could think I of. I mean, I just... Who who knows? Who knows? In which happens. case, who cares? <laughs> who knows what goes on in these stupid people's minds? I don't know. But I mean, we were we did always figure we were going to piss people off, and we know we're right. And it turns out we actually are because everyone agrees with us. Uh, that seems to be the case. Granted, our audience is limited, but that's okay. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, speaking of limited audience, there's all these different services for people outside the podcasting world. There's there's ways of getting like some demographic data and more than just how many downloads did you have? Like there's some ways of getting more information. And one thing that's good about having a kind of small audience is you can really pinpoint some things. Okay, we're on Spotify. I don't even have Spotify. I mean, I'm sure it's great. <laughs> I'm sure it's great. I think I have it, but I've never used yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even fully understand. It's like, so I get my... Oh, no, I guess I kind of... I have a Spotify music playlist through our Xbox. I do have that. Like, your music... And your audiobooks and your podcasts or whatever are all in one place or whatever. But in, but anyway, the, the important thing about the reason why I bring up Spotify is that I long suspected that we only had one Spotify listener, possibly two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I have now realized that that I was that we actually only have one. And I uh, and because it's only one, I know where she lives. <laughs> she lives in Germany. I've already forgotten the name of the town, but it's near Heidelberg. I looked because I had See, to look it up. See, and that's so fabulous to me that someone in Germany actually yeah. listens to us all the it time. Makes me, I'm just like, wow, that's really cool. Being, ma- having her near Heidelberg does make me wonder if she's like an American over there, like on the army base or something. Because my dad was stationed in Heidelberg a couple of times. Like my sister got oh. to live in Heidelberg when she was little. But, uh... I know that this woman is between 35 and 44 years old. <laughs> and uh, it's just like, you know, whoever you are, hi. I mean, you know. Hello, write to us and let us know who you are. I mean, we know <laughs> that we inexplicably keep getting all these downloads in Finland. Finland is still very consistent download wise. Now, granted, it doesn't hurt that we have an episode called Hello, Finland. Oh, yeah, yes, we do. <laughs> Which is very popular in Finland. <laughs> but truly, we we are fascinated with who all you people are. And if if there is any way, like, for us to actually address these people, like this woman in Germany, I'd love to do something for you. I hope you hear this episode. I'm sure you will. I'm sure the second you download it, I will know. Because you're it, lady. But. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, you know, not that I'm spying, but it'll tell me because you're alone. But uh, I would love to, you know, send you something or whatever. You just have to just t- just tell me what you want. What do you like? You like T-shirts? <laughs> do, you, do you like coffee mugs? Do you like keychains? What do you want? <laughs> Hey, Andrew. Hey, Maddie. Do you like horror movies? I sure do. Well, did you know that most horror movies are inspired by real-life horror? Really? Like what? Well, take The Shining, for instance. That's based on Stephen King's real-life addictions, or The Purge, which could be our country any minute now. Oh, and The Strangers, which is based on a real-life murder. People should be talking about these things. Hey, 
Guys. Oh, oh hey, Producer, producer Michael. Producer Michael, oh, hi. Well, I hate to break it to you, but somebody already is. It's you. <gasps> That's right. We are Friday the 13th, the podcast where we talk about horror in real life and horror in media, all from an LGBTQ perspective. Because we gay, y'all. We are proud members of the Legion Podcast Network, and we can be found on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, or wherever your favorite podcasts are found. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Come along with us on this crazy journey, and as always, get slayed. So, like, when a new year starts, you have all kinds of plans, you have all kinds of resolutions you're going to break. I mean, every, you know, it's just how it is. We all, we all know. I was going to say, yeah, plans that never, ever yeah. come to fruition. But even <laughs> if you were actively working towards stuff, last year kind of took a big dump on whatever your plans were. Most Mm -hmm. people, our plans just got ripped out from under us. And, and, you know, I keep thinking we had no idea it was coming, but what's, mm, I hate to talk about the fucking, the shit given in office, the shit given in chief, but God damn it, he knew shit in January and that makes me so goddamn angry. (laughs) But even if we did, even if they did tell us in January, like even if they were like, no, this is coming here and this is going to be bad. So this is what you need to do to prepare. We still, I mean, if you think back on March, like the big topic of conversation was how many seconds you're supposed to wash your hands. Oh, I know. And weirdly enough, I thought at the time it was exciting. It was like, oh, we all have to stay home and there's no traffic on the road. Oh, I love it. Because I really thought it was going to be a couple months and that was going to be the end. And of it, it. could have been. That's the thing that yeah. fucking sucks, as it could have been. Like, remember when you couldn't buy hand soap? Oh, I do remember. And my I've theory, dealt with that at work and angry people all the time. <laughs> yes. And, like, my theory at the time, and I may have mentioned it on the show, because we did, we did some COVID episodes in the early days of that. But my theory was that this is the result of all those people who didn't fucking wash their hands before. Mm-hmm. Like, it's one thing to teach children. It's like, you have to sing happy birthday twice or whatever, you know, whatever your, whatever your method is. My method became space, the final frontier. Did you know that, that, that if you do the entire monologue in, in the, in the cadence that William Shatner does it, you will get, you will wash your hands. In a oh, perfect no. Amount of time. Yeah. That was my, when I found out that that was, that that was a good one. I, that's the one I taught my dad. We all knew that there were people among us who were pigs. We all knew that there were people who didn't wash their hands after they used the bathroom. But the beginning of all this shit was like proof that, oh my God, people are disgusting. And truly, oh, yeah. I truly believe, I truly believe that a big part of why some of these assholes refuse to wear masks is because their teeth are rotten. And <laughs> because we all know yes. that first time you wear a mask, the first thing you realize is, wow, my breath is not as good as I thought it was. Oh, and I'm thinking of the worst person in the world. Oh, God, can you imagine? <laughs> but the thing is, I don't think... Because his breath was so foul. I mean, he must have been, what do they call it, nose blind? Is that the, the phrase they use for people who have cats? Who, who oh, have a yeah, box of shit yeah. in their house? I mean, there's no way that he can still smell his own breath. But God, yeah, his he, breath so bad it would fill a car. <laughs> you know, I bet when he takes a mask off, I bet there's just like a stain in the middle of his mask. <laughs> oh, God, he's so disgusting. But, oh. but like you, but you know, last January, January, 2020, those people hadn't learned yet. And you know, who knows how many of them still haven't, you know, we learned all kinds of weird things over the year, just from weird online discussions, like people who don't wash their legs and, and just weird, weird, weird chill. people who think yeah. just running water over them is the same thing as being clean. And it's so hopefully way more people than used to be clean are clean now. Uh, Just as one example of, so 2021 will be better because the entire year will be, well, we all know how to wash our hands. I mean, have you gotten a cold in the last year? I haven't gotten sick once. And part of that's not leaving my house. But even if I do leave my house, I mean, even my allergies aren't that bad. Because when I do go outside, I have a mask on, so I'm not inhaling stuff. We all have kind of become, I don't want to use the word experts because 
people thinking they're experts is the reason why America is in the trouble we're in. You know, people who think they know stuff. Oh, and well, no, no, and I think part of it too, the assholes that won't wear the goddamn masks. Yeah, because they think they know. Well, you know, some some bitch who sells essential oils, who because she does that, she considers herself a scientist. And therefore, her friends should listen to her because she, you know, ingests lavender oil or some bullshit because she thinks it kills germs. And so she shouldn't have to wear a mask. And it's and, you know, and I'm I'm talking about like, OK, I most of my friends and family are awesome. But every once in a while, there's one person I could have blocked on Facebook, but I'm so fascinated by the inner workings of the minds of people who are that fucking delusional. Mm -hmm. And she is so fucking out of her mind. And some of her siblings have stopped speaking to her because she refuses and she will not listen because she thinks she is a scientist. Oh, God. Because she sells essential oils. Mm Mm-hmm. Aside from assholes, because there's always going to be assholes. But we, as a community, as a people, we learn shit this year because of what happened and in 2020. And so we're starting 2021 with a whole bunch of knowledge that we never had before. So we have an opportunity, even just in terms of communicable diseases and kind of community spirit and taking care of each other. I mean, obviously we kind of fell down on the taking care of each other thing as a nation last year. But now that we've seen how much it sucks when you don't do the right thing, more people, I think, I hope, are going to feel motivated. Oh, Oh, can I just say something about that, though, that really pisses me off? Okay, so we saw over Memorial Day. Okay. All the assholes that went and stayed the fuck at home and went and had their parties. Big spike. And then we saw 4th of July. All the assholes, blah, 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 big spike. And now, like, for example, in Los Angeles, Mm -hmm. there is over 500,000 cases in L.A. County. And you know why that is? Because of all these fucking assholes that wouldn't stay the fuck home at Thanksgiving. Because they have to go spend it with their god damn right oh, families yeah. give me a break they yes and every and they fucking knew they knew it they'd seen it everyone was saying thanksgiving is going to cause hundreds of thousands of people to be sick or dead by christmas yep and sure enough that's what happened and oh it just makes mm-hmm. me so mad that they goddamn flew in the millions and now there's this huge thing because of people with fucking thanksgiving which is just such a made up stupid holiday anyway yeah so they could go spend it with their goddamn families that they talk to on the phone anyway please girl please it's like i understand people missing people i get it there's some people i do miss but wouldn't you rather everybody that you love stay alive like i don't it's just it's, yeah. a, it's a mindset i will never have. sucked. I mean, I don't have to tell you that. It was a year made up almost entirely of suck. We are all exhausted. And 2021 is going to be better. It just is. Not that I have a crystal ball and know that things will get better, but because we're going to make it better. All of us. Because we have skills now that we didn't have a year ago. We know new things about ourselves and our world. And because of that, we're going to do whatever we can to do better, to be better from now on. You know that thing in the pre-flight instructions where the plane waitress tells you to put the oxygen mask on yourself before helping someone else? That's what I want you to remember for 2021. You need to take care of yourself first so that you'll be able to take care of other people. And that's why 2021 is the year of self-care here at the Bitchin' Boutique. Every episode this year 
We're going to have a brief segment with information and suggestions to help you chill out and recharge your battery. And don't give me that, but I don't have time nonsense. You do. And I'll prove it to you in every episode. That is 26 times this year. I'm going to convince you that I'm right about this. And here is Amelia is right, number one. You're just going to breathe for a bit and really think about what you're doing. Okay, right now, here we go. Close your eyes if you can. It'll help you stay focused. But if you can't close them right now, that's okay. Be aware of your breathing. Don't control it for now, just notice it. Pull your shoulders up to your ears. Roll them back and around and back up. And now drop them. Think about how your ribs and diaphragm work when you breathe. Your chest cavity works like a bellows. Your muscles pull your ribs outwards and the diaphragm goes down, creating a vacuum effect that sucks air in. The tummy should move outwards to make that cavity as big as possible. And when the ribs push in, and the diaphragm comes up, the bellows push that air out. Imagine your ribs having handles like a bellows, and those handles are being pulled apart as you inhale for a count of four. Hold that air in for five, and then close the handles and feel the air being pushed out for a count of eight. Now for your next few breaths, be conscious of that movement, the movement of the bellows. Do the counts of four, five, and eight if you can. If you can't, do just what you can do. Ready? Inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four, five. Exhale, slowly. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do this a few more times, counting to yourself, thinking about the muscles and bones working together to pull and push air from your lungs. Right now, there is only you, you and your breath. On your next inhale, make your belly softer. And then softer on this one. And then this one. On your next exhale, drop your shoulders a little lower. Keep your breath deep and deliberate as you open your eyes to return to your day. Your body knows what to do. See, you just chilled out for like a minute and you learned that thing about focusing on how your chest cavity works. Cool, huh? 2021, we're all gonna rock it. is one asshole to be in contact. I wasn't going to go inside, but I had to. And it wasn't the people working at the gas station. It was the guy who stood next to me who wouldn't, who kept getting too close. Yeah. And it was one instance, one time. And now I go home and then I infect someone who doesn't know they've been infected and they go to work at the nursing home. And, I mean, God damn it. It only works if everybody does it. This is true of a lot of shit. It's not even just this, but this is a very clear, obvious example of it.
People can bitch all they want about, well, you're you're making it so that people can't work. It's like, no, you're making it so people can't work. Yeah. People could be working right now. Like in Taiwan or something, there was this huge concert with like thousands of people in the audience, you know, because it's fucking fine there because they did what they were told. And now they're having concerts again. We could be doing that. Yeah. And it makes me so mad. These fucking people saying that, oh, to wear the mask is inhibiting their freedom. Yeah, fuck your freedom. Please. Fuck your freedom. Their freedom. And I'm sorry, it's like, it is literally a minor inconvenience. The only thing that's even remotely legit is people who need to read lips. But they make masks that have like a window in them. Now, granted, I don't own one of those. But if I, you know, but if I worked with someone or if I had some like a neighbor or something who needed to read my lips in order to communicate with me, I would go out of my way to get one. I know. But on the other hand, it's such a small part of the population and these circumstances are so extraordinary but the people who aren't wearing masks shut the fuck up and stay but like home. okay the bitch i mentioned before who thinks she's a scientist apparently she has a slight hearing loss and one of her reasons why people it's not just she doesn't want to wear one she doesn't want anyone to wear them because what if i can't hear you and i can't watch your lips it's like well okay let's all die then because apparently that's yeah, the only other the alternative. Yeah, she can shut the fuck up and stay home until it's over because she ain't the world. Boo-hoo for your problems, but maybe you try to do what you can do and the rest of us are just trying to keep our families alive. I mean, it's fucking terrifying. Yeah, it's just... I mean, it's like, ugh. We owe it to each other and we owe it to ourselves to do whatever we can to make this year better. Like nobody gets to be fucking lazy because being lazy and not caring is how we get here, is how we got to where we are. Oh, absolutely. You know. Well, being lazy and selfish. Yeah. Yeah. I can't affect the minds of other people because there are people out there who it has to. Things have to happen to them directly before they care. Like someone who doesn't give a shit about gay people until their kid comes out to them. And then they go, well, I don't want anyone to be mean to my kid. Or like a man who he doesn't give a shit about rape until he has a daughter. And now it's, oh, well, I, as a father of three girls, I have (laughs) an opinion. It's like, you should have felt that way before you ever knocked anyone up. You know, like, but there's a lot of people Mm -hmm. that they don't get it until they get it. The rest of us don't have time to fucking wait around for those people we all have to do everything we can do to make this shit work it isn't just about covid it's about everything it's about like literal social security not the thing that was created 70 years ago however many years ago that was yeah actual social security is nobody should have to worry about being evicted because of situations beyond their control everyone should have their heat on in the winter Oh, you know what my favorite thing about that that goddamn $1,200 payment that not everybody even got last year? Oh, God, yes. That wasn't adjusted for in any way for, like, cost of living. So, like, someone who lived in, like, rural Alabama got the exact same amount of money as someone who shares an ap- apartment with, like, 10 other people in some borough of New York. Like, they got the exact same amount of money. Oh, I know. And it's like $1,200 can, doesn't get you through a month in most places. It certainly doesn't get you through a month here. Oh, I know. In fact, I saw something on the news the other day about that. And apparently $1,200 will buy you a bunk in a bunkhouse in the Tenderloin in San Francisco. So you're not even having a room. You just have a, a bed. Yeah, they actually showed these things that were like rooms of bunk beds where there are three levels of bed in these big rooms. One of those beds is $1,200 a month. Oh, my God. And that's your whole home. When you lived in San Francisco, I know, I mean, you split that apartment, but how much was the rent on that apartment back then? I think it was probably seven or $800. Yeah. I mean, that was back when my apartment was like 350 and my apartment was three times as big. You know, and that was back, you know, and like, ooh, making a thousand dollars a month was a lot of money. Oh, I can I can have savings. Uh, You know, (laughs) it's so (laughs) crazy. Oh, my God. (laughs) But anyway, yeah, twelve hundred dollars. Nothing. 
You know, I really, really thought this episode was going to be positive. Uh, well, there's there's elements. <laughs> It's hard to be po- it's hard to be positive. I really came into it thinking that this was that we were just going to talk about how 2021 was going to be better because it has to be and because we're going to make it better. And yeah. And now, you know, 45 50 minutes later, ah fuck it. Fuck it. It's going to be terrible. <laughs> we're all going to die. Fuck it. Well, no, I mean, it will be better, eh. but all of the shit needs to be washed away, and that's not a clean thing. If, you know? if only the terrible, the terrible people would be the ones who would die. I, you know, I used to think it was not cool to say that. Like, I used to think, like, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. You know what? Fuck my worst enemy. They can all fucking die alone. But we will see the end of it in 2021, so that's God, a good thing. We have to. We have to. You know. But that, that's true, because at least we will have people in power who will take this fucking seriously. Yeah, because the vaccine coming out, the mask mandate for, what, February, March, April, that's going to make a huge difference. So by next summer, next summer should be oh my fabulous. God, can we have Texas Frightmare this year? Can we please? Yeah, next summer is going to be fabulous. It is. You know, just a few more months. I'm just so afraid that I'm going to have to have a bubble boy costume or something to go to go to Frightmare. <laughs> because all it takes is one asshole. Someone made a casual suggestion of how about proof of vaccination in order to be allowed into Frightmare. And oh my God, it was as if Hitler showed up. I think it's a great idea. I would be happy to do it. Oh, I think that's great. Uh, you know, these these stupid anti-vaxxers, they can go live on a Christian island somewhere and shut up. If you're unvaccinated and you want to come in, fine. But you need to wear a special sim on the pocket of your shirt so that everyone can identify you. <laughs> Yeah, I swear this isn't turning into a Hitler had some good ideas sort of thing. But God damn it, sometimes you really do need to uh, just be able to identify. <laughs> you know, and I know the whole, you know, personal freedom bullshit, but I'm sorry. Freedom denotes responsibility because freedom without responsibility is adolescence. It's being a fucking kid and thinking you have the right to be mad about anything when all of your needs are being met by other people. Yeah, and not taking your goddamn vaccine is not freedom. It's being stupid and selfish. Yeah, I had read something online yesterday, I think, and, you know, I don't like mm-hmm. memes. I Memes irritate me, as you well know. But I saw something that it actually made me chuckle because it's true, and it made me think of, you know, a friend of mine who who I've done a Woo episode about and her crazy beliefs, who's also an anti-vaxxer. The QAnon lady? Yeah, and it was just something about, you know, all you anti-vaxxers that think that, you know, a vaccine is Bill Gates creating a microchip that's going to track you. You're putting this out on the fucking internet on your goddamn smartphone. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or on your laptop, and all laptops have location things now yep. for your maps and your shopping. And, and your camera's probably watching you. Yeah, so shut the fuck up. It's like you're walking around with a tracker in your pocket, and your car tracks you now, too. All these people who think that, oh, well, I don't want, to, I don't want the vaccine because I don't know what's in it. I guarantee you they've all eaten hot dogs, and they don't know what the fuck is in them. And you know what? They're probably healthier for every hot dog eaten. That's right. for listening. If you enjoy our show, please take a moment to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher. If you send us a screenshot of your review, we'll send you a Bitchin' Boutique sticker. Everyone Everyone loves loves stickers! Please subscribe or add us to your favorites wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribers get new episodes first and are also more attractive. Drop us a line anytime at pitneyandamelia at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you.